Alright, here we go. Welcome for what should be the last installment of my Final Fantasy Pixel Remastered for Final Fantasy 1. Should be the last one of the series. Uh, I don't imagine we're going to have too much difficulty getting through this place. There's always the possibility of mishaps, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'm confident we can make it. It's really just a question of can we make it through all the bosses, and especially the final boss, without too much befalling us. Last time we did three out of the four fiends all in one all in one video in less than an hour thanks to proper setup. Uh, so right now we're gonna do a quick run around, buying some supplies, getting ready for the final push into the final dungeon. Well, the word final there. So we're gonna race around. Don't shouldn't need any more spells. Just need a place where I can buy all the high potions in the world, because why not? All the potions in the world. All the ethers I can fit. Sure, let's buy some Phoenix Downs. Just because. Gold Needle, let's buy 12 of those. Why not? Make sure we get at least 10 of everything. None of these. I don't think I'll need those, but what the heck. Cottages. We are good to go. Really, it's just about the high potions and the ethers and the occasional phoenix down is all I really need. For once, I'm going to sort by items and then sort by weapons. Now customize because I want my healing staff where I can get to it. The black robe up top, gauntlets up top, white robe up top, razor, don't need that nearly as much, healing helm where it's a little more easily accessible, giant's, cl uh, giant's glove is what I meant to put up there, not the gauntlets. Gauntlets are less and less useful as time goes by, but still nice with the occasional AoE lightning spell. Wizard Staff, again, less and less useful. The Light Axes are actually probably going to be more useful should we run into certain undead, but I don't think there's a whole lot in the final shrine. But they're going to be more useful than Defender. So we've got some of Fire, Lightning, Ice. Swap those two out. So I have Healing up top and what I need for the final for the boss battles. Then... White robe for that. Healing helms are up there. Healing staff is readily available. Undead killing. Ice, lightning, fire. There's no wind in this game. There's a wind element. There's a wind crystal. But there's no wind magic at all. I just. I've been playing this game forever. That, is for, that may be the first time that's actually occurred to me. That's a weird thought. But wind magic, pretty actually pretty far, few and far between in Final Fantasies. Alright. Should be stocked. Ready to go. Hopefully I can remember my way through this place. There's a starting town. So right about here is the extra cave that appears when you beat the Earth Shrine in the other versions. Um, and a little statue of Lich disappears when you kill Lich. Down here there's a little whirlpool above or below this island, I forget which. A little whirlpool that opens up for the water. Like I said, there's, a, there's the fire cavern that opens up when you kill Merilith up on the Dragon Isles. And then somewhere in here, I believe it's right here, is the uh, one that opens up after you kill Tiamat. And it is the longest and largest and hardest of all the bonus dungeons to get through until you get to the extra bonus dungeon, the, dun the, temp the Time Dungeon, which opens up in the back of the Temple of Chaos. Actually, fairly early on, you can get in and see it. It is a massive pain. I've tried it once. I did not really and find it an enjoyable experience and I don't know that I've ever really gone back to do it ever since. Let's see where I can land this thing. There we go. 
So, as we learned in the top of the Temple of Wind, or the whatever the air, the air fortress was, all the forces are flowing toward the Temple of Fiend, the Chaos Temple, whatever it's called. You'd think I would remember having seen it at one point, but too many different versions of this game conflicting in my brain. So, yeah, remember at the beginning I pointed out the five bats, and then we talked to the Lufinians, and they said their five buddies had disappeared and were now bats? Oh, it actually tells us in this version. Curse the Fiends changes in these bat forms but prevented us from speaking. The Light of the Crystals has enabled us to speak again. Oh, that's nice. I don't think I've ever heard them speak before. We are sky people. Well, you're bats. You've been bats for 400 years, stuck in this little room. Dude. Being fed into the past by the Black Crystal. One just looking through the Light of the Crystals. One we've been looking at for all along. Huh, the true root of evil lies just ahead. Light, the four we've been seeking all this time. You haven't been seeking very hard. I'll transport you 2,000 years in the past, the beginning of the time loop. Come on, I'll check to the last bat. Come on, out of the way. Not that way. I don't believe it. I don't think in any of the other versions you're able to talk to the bat people. There we go. Since shine the light of the four orbs on the crystal, crystal black crystal in the center of the chamber, doing so open the time portal of the shrine as it existed 2,000 years ago. All right. I think in the original you like covered the black orb with your four orbs, or something weird like that. And like it didn't really make sense, the physics of putting four round orbs on top of that orb and expecting it to stay still. I guess. Focusing the light of the four shining crystals: fire, earth, water, and wind. And heart, you you forge, Captain Planet of the Black Crystal. Flow of time surges. Space begins to warp. Step into my web, said the spider to the fly. Well, that's new. A weird little portal to take me back, I assume. Alright, there's a couple of different ways you can go here. I remember right, the down and left leads you to stairs at the dead end. And down and right takes us to where we're actually supposed to be going here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, just in case. Never hurts to have Palin kick off a healing spell. Worst case scenario, it doesn't do any good at all. Alright, it's the first couple of floors. We're mostly gonna wreck things. There we go. Yeah, we gotta go up. What? A whole bunch of these flans, but we have pre for strike, which means everybody's getting blasted with AoE magic that is free, so I don't care. Gauntlets. Thor's hammer. There we go. That should top it off, and we're done. Or cannon didn't get the uses. Okay, yeah, we're in the right way. Go. The rest of the, like, the whole rest of this floor, I think. I don't know, there's one of these floors that's like a giant troll. It's completely empty. There's nothing you can do there. And so you could spend a whole bunch of time wandering around. Bloody hell. Green dragons, don't like them. Thank you for the creative strike. They're not that that hard to kill. I say this with respect. Don't try and prove me wrong, game. But yeah, when they come in large groups and they get a chance to attack, they just start wrecking you with their choking gas ability. Keep moving past that. I forgot I reordered everything the way it's supposed to be. You're 
not so stunning, Dark Wizard. Perhaps the Dark Fighters are quite stunning. I don't know. I'm not a good judge of Astosian beauty. Do, 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 do. All right, now. I don't know. Like, I don't know why I bothered to buy all the potions and ethers and stuff. I still, even having that, I use healing items so rarely. All right, this should be a Phantom Eye, the same palette as the Evil Eye or whoever it was that was guarding the floating crystal. This guy, Death Eye, in this version. Okay. Um, he has some instant kill spells available to him, so hopefully we will kill him first. Like that? Yes. Excellent work, guys. Yeah, you get like a gold and, and, and one XP. Utterly pointless. Okay, now, in the original, these were fairly... I think these had gold. So I'm glad there's something more useful there. Mostly rehashes of bad guys we've seen before. Dry Aether and Elixir, both excellent things. Now, the loot we got. Here we go. Who knew the Final Fantasy theme was a secret magic spell all along to open up the stairs back down to the floor I already been on in the Chaos Shrine. All right, let's see. This one, there's nothing on the bottom right or down. I think this is the floor we end up going up and left. This room, S and G's. Yeah. That should still offer enough damage. Let's see how well you guys do, and how I will cover healing just in case we need it. All right, come on, stats. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. See, now technically, I would have been better having each of them target an individual dragon. Although, there, again, there's still the possibility stats would not be able to kill a dragon by himself. So we may have still ended up with two dragons, both heavily damaged and able to be killed in a couple of hits. So the AoE was worth try, uh, worth the risk, trying to get the battle over faster. Yeah. So that makes sense. Okay, and then going the right way. You guys do that. And these guys all have AoE, so Palin, get on the heal staff just in case. I'm okay with the strongest, one of the stronger ones, the Ryos, trying to run away. Waste your turn that way. It's fine with me. I will punch you back. Look at the XP in this place. Yeah, there we go. There's the stairs I wanted. Couldn't quite see them. Alright. Now this one, yeah, if I look at the mini-map, that confirms, yeah. So going down is blocked on both sides of this level. So the only option is to go all the way across. Yeah, the, the expanded inventory and increased number of wep of different healing options you have really just make this heads and tails easier than the original version. Because like, I saw something that reminded me again, so it, and you had 99 regular potions was the max you could hold. There were no such thing as high potions, and you could carry pure potions, was I believe the original name for them, for the antidotes. So you stock up on those things for getting poisoned in here, because you do not want to try and run through the, the final dungeon running on fumes of being poisoned if you run out of uh, Poisona spells. And so, yeah, you stock up on, you have 99 low-level, 50 hit point healing potions, and that's all you had. I remember that one. Alright, so this we are going all the way up, all the way over, and all the way down. Alright, you guys take those. 
Talon. Stay on healing. Definitely we're on the right places. The earth elemental, this is the earth floor for sure. So every floor we go down from this point forward, we'll be switching elementals and the elemental fiends at the end of the floor. See what this looks like because in the original, okay. Oh, okay, that's how they solved it. Because before, there was a forced battle against Lich, whichever of the four directions you walk in from. And if I remember correctly, if you step out and walk back in, or if you hit the stairs and come back out and, and try to go back through one of those gaps, you would fight Lich yet again. I was wondering how they were going to solve that without restructuring this, but sticking him right on top of the stairs works just fine. All right, now this Lich is harder than the last one. This Lich has access to the Flare spell. All right, now I need to, yeah. Potions, potions, that's it, just you can. All right, here we go. All right, we are still taking him seriously, however, because he does hit harder than he used to. Um. Ethers. So I can afford to use some of those right now. I don't know how hard he's going to be, is the problem. Probably not still not too terribly difficult, but. Let's try and do Ow, yep, see, there it is. Flare. You are a jerk. That hurts a lot. Don't do that again, please. Go. All right, you start attacking. You're gonna use giant globe on yourself. You are gonna haste him, and you, for the love of God, are going to heal because that flare spell sucks. All right, Kanan, drive it home, kill him before he does any more serious damage, please. Yeah, so way more hit points than he used to, which, you know, makes sense. He would certainly need an upgrade, otherwise you could sneeze on him and the old Lich would die to this party. Alright. You do that, and actually, you kick off the healing staff, because... Not much else should be needed for this. Bada boom! There we go. Really, with, that, with the exception of that flare spell, this lich is not too difficult. But if you're not ready for it, that thing will tear you apart. Or if you ca if you cast it a couple of rounds in a row, he's mean. All right, fire floor. There are a couple items on here. I think. To be honest, I don't know that I ever fully explored this floor on the original version, and it wasn't until, and I've been playing it so many times and just go straight through this floor, I didn't realize all the treasure that was actually here until I saw someone do a playthrough, and since they didn't know where they were going, they kind of wandered around and all of a sudden found all sorts of interesting treasure that I didn't know existed. So, um... I don't think anything's immediately available. I think it's down right there, going from down below the, the fiend is where you get to it all. So we're gonna go 
the place I know works first. And then we're gonna go down and explore, because I know there's a couple items that, if I, I don't remember what they were, I know they were pretty cool. I think there was another Protect Cloak, which, you know, better for uh, the Red Mage, I think, than the buckler he has. So up here, there's nothing in this room. Alright, let's quickly jolt through that room. Alright, so there's, there is Merylith, not Carrie. Alright, and I think... Okay, so here's a chest. Monsters? No. Oh, Protect Cloak, there it is. Alright, let's see how this compares. Should be definitely better than the Buckler. Oh, significantly better. There you go. Nice upgrade. Alright, and then I think there's something farther east, it looks like, on the map. Let's see. Does the, I don't think I bothered to check. The There is the Strength, Agility, Stamina, Intellect. Okay, yeah, see, there's Intellect in this. As opposed to in some later Final Fantasies, there's a difference between, like, spirit and intellect, I think, is usually how it ends up. And intellect helps your black magic, and spirit helps your white magic. In this one, it is all magic bonuses. So, which explains why Palin is kicking so much butt with using black magic spells from the items. Because his intellect is just as high as a black mage's would be. So he's ripping out the same damage that Race would be if I had my Black Robe ma Race active. So that's a nice feature on this one because it gives the White Robe something to do at this point. Like he can kick out some serious damage on those AoEs. Or he can just sit here and heal everybody for a pretty significant amount every turn. So I'll take it. Ah, uh, stats, you did not do your job. Level up! Excellent, Kanan finally caught up to Durzo, almost. So a few hit points behind. Stats is right behind him, and Palin has the most hit points. The White Mage. Elixir, alright. Okay, so yeah, so the other side must, the other direction of the of this lower area must have the extra Sasuke's Blade, which I don't need. Um, so there's not really any point in wandering over that direction. I don't remember what else is over there, but, at, I mean, there's not going to be anything else that's going to replace the gear that I have at this point, so anything else would just be a waste of time. The, clo the Protect Cloak was totally worth it. Red Dragons. I should have fought you in a volcano, but didn't. Oh, there's one, I believe there's some flame armor that's protected by a red dragon, which I guess in this version would have had the red dragon in the chest somehow, instead of standing right in front of the chest guarding it as a repeatable battle. Alright, where's the door? There it is. With the, if you didn't know how to use the items, and didn't have the healing staff sp being spammed every turn, the constant hit point drain walking through this place would actually be a bit of a drain, and especially if you only had 99 50 hit point potions. So this dungeon especially was a much tougher slog on the original Nintendo. Let's see. Same deal. Giant's Club for you. Haste for you. Temper. And I didn't actually end up buying Null Blaze. I usually go back and buy that. Oh well. Um, I mean, I can cast Blazara at her. Do a run up. And Vizra help against physical attacks if she uses one. Lich hits harder than you, Merilith. I will haste him and 
Eh, we'll do it again. That was a solid hit. Against one person. Still not that worried about your Marilith, sorry. Finish it off. Drive it home. With a Lazara spell. No. I'm not shocked. Alright. Let's do some healing. Might as well. But they do add up. She can just sit there and pound you with Faragas every turn. You'd be, I mean, you'd have to kick off a lot of healing. Actual, slightly higher level healing spells to keep up with it. But still not anything to worry about. Do, 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 do. All right. Who wants high potion? Everybody gets a high potion, even if they're only missing like 30 hit points. All right. The water level. I remember this being a little more confusing, but I don't remember there being any treasure on this one either. Of course, knowing me, I could have missed the treasure and, you know, years and years and years ago and just never got figured out that there was treasure later. Let's see. I think it's in. But I believe we go in. And then because doors can only face one direction. Speed this battle up a bit. Gauntlets and Thor's hammer. Show us your power, Palin. Anytime now. Or wait for everybody to get pummeled and actually need the healing that I decided to skip on. You got that route too. Alright, stats have finished all off. Alan almost had, did enough damage to him all because he killed that one, which means the other ones were not far behind. He almost pulled it off. Do -do, do -do. That was close enough. Yeah, doors can only face down, which means we have to exit down here, turn around, walk up around to the other side of the wall, and go in to the other direction. Upward facing doors. Apparently not a thing in this world's architecture. Everybody likes their doors to face south. Alright, in, and then we should go here to the middle and down. Alright, yes, that's something left. Alright, let's see. Somewhere, yeah, okay, they just put the Kraken on. So right about here is where you fought the Kraken originally. So you're just blithely wandering down this corridor, expecting him to be here or something, and no, like four steps earlier, when you haven't quite healed up yet because you're waiting to the last possible minute, they're like, nope, here you go, boss battle. Here we go. Giant's gloves. Haste. This is a very familiar cadence here. And more worried about the damage. For Terra. Yeah, because look at it. Eight hits, 371. Dang. That'll at least protect from a little bit of damage once Proterra kicks off. But. Still, he could probably finish Kanan off if he, take, if he hits him again like that next turn. Alright, Giant's Glove yourself. Haste him. And... Q. 
Kiraga in, please. Sooner rather than later, pal. Alright, Pandora, that shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that's nothing. Temper Durzo, because the Miss Kraken's going to take a few more hits to take down, obviously. And... He's got a bit more to work with on damage-wise, so yep. So yep, another one of those, so Hilara definitely called for it here. 16 hits, 725, not bad, not bad. Kanan, what you got? 20 hits again, 14-14. Kanan, clearly the powerhouse here. Go ahead and just heal, I think. And we're keeping up with him for right now. Ow! Unless he does that. Obviously, Patera's not doing too much. Or, I don't know, maybe it kept him from getting one shot. But, there we go. Stronger versions of the originals. A little bit more to worry about, but not. Not all that in a bag of chips. go. Alright, now, air, the Wind Fiend floor. There is something down and right, and I think it's a fairly straightforward if you just sort of wander that direction. And it will be the best sword in the game, usable by any class unless they change it in this version, which apparently is always a possibility. Spell Death Knight. I believe they were evil men. They weren't just bad men. They were evil men in the original. Oh, pass it. Yeah, there it is. Hell no. No, thank you. I don't care how strong I am. That's an AoE stun option they have. No, no. Run away, please. Yes. Never trust a mind flare. Seriously? I just ran away from these guys. I mean, it's pretty obviously where I'm very obvious where I'm going in this one directional hallway, so they got ahead of me somehow? I don't know. Masamune! Who Obviously doesn't do me any good in Kanan's hands. In Durzo's hands, look at that! Even in his hands, that is a 23 attack power. That is a 50% increase on his offensive abilities if I give it to him. Or, could give it to my Red Wizard, and he suddenly becomes able to wield damage. Or you could always give it to Palin, and suddenly your white wizard starts thwacking people left and right. But it's still, just because the attack power is higher, does not mean that he's going to dish out the same damage, because he does not have the same stats. Is Kanan here? Strength 25. Durzo, strength 25. Stats is 25. Palin, 15. So no matter what weapon I stick in Palin's hands, he is ju he's not going to come anywhere near the same damage output that these three could do. And so by giving the Masamune to the Red Wizard, he joins the ability, for the moment at least, to dish out one-on-one -on -one damage. And we'll see what happens now in this, when, they, when he uses it. It's like, like, holy crap, 959 out of the Red Mage. That was awesome stats, good job. Kind of curious what it would do in Durzo's hands. 
I don't know. I, I might switch. I will probably switch it on to Durzo before the final battle. Uh, just for the extra damage output against the boss. But between here and there, there's not a whole lot of point. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it out on two now. Who should be not right there? Oh, they cl that's closed off. I do not remember that those guys being like that. I think I'm gonna take. I'm gonna swap the Massimone onto Durzo and see what the, his damage output looks like with it. And if he go, just goes through the roof, then I may keep it on him for the final boss fight. We'll see. Totally changes the end of this game with having that as an option. All right, we go quick save again. I don't know why I keep doing this. I have not used one at all, but we'll see. Alright, team at 2.0. Giants Clubs. Haste. Temper. Temper, temper. And what are you gonna do? You. He is former guards against fire and instant death. I don't think he has any instant death options, but he just deals with such a has a high damage output as an AoE option that he can kill people in one shot sometimes. So let's go with Proterra. Up the whole defense of everybody. Okay, Bizarro, that's not, that shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Durzo is the only one who really took a serious damage from that. So Proterra pr primarily protects against physical damage, I believe. I think to protect against the magic damage, really, you need the Null Blaze or Null uh, Ice, whatever they're called, to really protect yourself. Paste, and... I can expect another AoE here. Yep, Vendara. So Hilara sounds like a really good idea right now. Alright, Kanan, how much are you going to do here? I forgot to swap the Mask Mune on the Durzo. 24 hits! Sweet. Might as well. Actually. Let's speed up his ability. No pun intended. To dish out damage. Nobody really needs it except Durzo. Uh-oh. Okay, yeah, that's an instant death. Thankfully, everybody avoided that. Alright, so now, Kanan, Durzo, and Stats all have haste and the Giant's Glove on them. Kanan has temper as well, but everybody should be able to dish out some serious damage on this turn. Let's see if T Mac can withstand it. We go. The healing staff? I don't know, Palin. Ice Storm. Okay, that's gonna hurt. Not as bad as I thought. Dude, Kanan. Almost 2,000. See, and yet stats, again, less than 1,000. Even with. You know, using the Masmone. With haste. And the giant's glove on him still couldn't keep up with the other guys anywhere near what they were doing. So, as we go down into the final floor of the dungeon, I'm definitely going to swap this uh, Sasuke's blade over onto Dur off of Durzo and put the Masamone on him. Those were the words I was looking for. All right, here we go. A big old floor full of pillars. Not much in the way of, you know, interior design, although I guess it's got to support the weight of all the rest of the stuff above it, so I guess that makes sense. New to that, and we're going to Light Axe again. Light Axe. Okay. 
swap the sword out. Swap the sword out. Remind me. Reminder, swap the sword out. Why are you guys bothering? Just give me your XP, please. Masmune, which I believe as a kid I called the Masmune because I didn't know any better, and I probably I bet tons of other pe uh, kids who played this originally did as well. Because you know we didn't know how to pronounce these things, so we pronounced them the way it sort of looks in English. Alright, who could this be? Do you remember me? I was once the most renowned knight of Cornelia! Yes, you were the very first dude we... but we kicked. Two thousand years from now, you killed me! I am Garland! Probably not anything close to the voice I used for him originally. Oh, you did defeat me then. But the four great forces saved me by sending me back through time. Once here, I sent the Four Fiends into the future, where they shall once again use the Four Great Forces to send me back into the past. After we kill you again? In 2,000 years, I will remember none of this, which explains the plot hole. But why are you so weak in 2,000 years? Because, like, you know, we were level 6 and we trashed you. I will be reborn again here. So even as you die again and again, I shall return, born again into this endless cycle that I have created by getting my butt kicked over and over again. Oh, he looks pretty much the same as I remember him. All right, here we go. Magic, temper, you, magic. Now, if I, he's got a predictable pattern of spells and attacks each, but I, I don't remember what it is. So we're basically just going to see what we can do to out damage him. Ow, holy cow, that hurt a lot. Stats, you may need to do some, uh, some other work here for us. Because chaos is going to be fast every turn, I bet. You, Giants Club Yourself, Stats, do you have... Yes, okay, we're gonna just load up on Proterra while you kick off. Yeah, you'll log over here. Dude, not cool! Holy cow. 740. Phoenix down, and I don't even know what did I... Okay, you have... Saber, Proterra, you don't have haste, so you can haste yourself. Did I buy it? Yes, full life. Okay, totally worth it. Now having that, thank you. You're a jerk. Chaos. I hate that you go so fast and get to attack me for it. Everyone, okay, thousand hit points. So I do. I think I lo I looked this up just to sort of gauge how tough he is. I think he's got something like twenty thousand hit points. So we just got to keep ahead of his damage. Lowers evasion. Is 
Saber, haste, temper. Okay, so temper yourself. You. Kiraga. Him. And. Since I don't know if, what, who's gonna need what yet, we're gonna go for Healara for this turn. Ow. Still, Talon should sort of take the edge off of that. Probably just need to spam Kiraga instead every turn. Alright, so he's got roughly 3,000 damage done for him. That should be enough for that. Okay, you are going to protect us. No, you're not. You are going to heal him. You are going to know all yourself. So that you don't die. Actually, you should know all stats first. Okay, well, and you're dead. Which means you lose all your buffs when they bring you back. What? Do I not understand how the null all works? That's entirely possible. No death, but I thought null all protected you against all the elements. Did I... Reduces magic damage from spells by half. And it missed? How did it miss? Lazara, that shouldn't be too bad. Thank you for that, at least. Alright, guess what? You're going to start all over again, Kanan. Retemper you because it, it's just it's too extra damage is is so important. All right, and because he's gonna kick off those AOEs all the damn time. Okay, that's not so bad. But the Hilaga should top everybody off and put us in good shape. Saber. Temper. Back to the fight. After the kill. Alright, Kan's back up and running. Durzo's up and running. to say temper stack so like I could sit here and cast temper and it would continuously raise their offensive power. But for right now we're just going to stack Proterra and since no one needs it desperately right now we're only going to use Hilara. Tsunami, ouch. See, Hilaga, should have used Hilaga. 1500 from Birzo, nice work. 24 hits, 1400 from Kanan. Alright, you are going to do a lot of this time, because the Lord only knows what's going to happen here. Okay, Bizarre. See, every time I think, like, yeah, I'll use the big spell to heal all the damage that's about to come, it is that. I'm not complaining. Don't, don't, I'm not complaining, dude. You still have Saber, Temper, and Proterra, and Haste. Okay, you're still good. I don't know, I don't remember if those wear off, and this is one of the only battles that lasts long enough where it might, if that's a thing. So, we're gonna be... Saber, Temper, Proterra, Haste, Durzo, okay, so he's got all of them as well. All right. Now, Proterra should stack, so this should be actually worthwhile to keep casting. It's not like stats as black magic is going to do any good against Chaos, so I don't feel too bad about that. Alright, I want to use Holy. I want to see what happens. Everybody's in good shape. We're going to use it once. Let's see what happens. Bandaga will hurt, but it's not horrendously so.
All right, come on, show me what you got, Palin. Really? 358. Wow, that was so underwhelming. All right, Kanan, why did you do so little damage? What has worn off on you? You have Saber, you have Temper, Proterra, and Haste. That did crap damage, dude. What the hell? All right, uh, Durzo, go. Just in case, who is the lowest? Definitely Durzo. So you do that, and then you kick off Kilara. Okay, see? Not too bad. Everybody else will be fine. Stats will bring Durzo back from the edge. There we go. Seriously, Kanan, what gives? Thank God we got Durzo's offense going here. Yeah, I'm just gonna just cast more temper on Kanan. Ow, that's gonna hurt. But thank God for Hialaga coming up next. Sixteen hits, a thousand. There we go. Cannon's back. alternated between Hilara and Hilaga here. Don't you dare kill anyone. Son of a motherless goat. Okay. Don't really have anything for him to do. So that, I guess. Maybe that would have helped protect against Earthquake, although I highly doubt it. Blaze, that will probably hurt a lot. Yep. Oh, Durzo's gonna miss out. But he's dead. We did it. Woo! Definitely a tough fight. That is way harder than I remember it being, but I think it, I mean, obviously it has to be, because the original Chaos, I think, think if I remember back to the screen like Tiamat had a thousand hit points the war mech in the air temple had a thousand hit points and chaos had two thousand so you could see back there where the monk could boost himself up with you know the giant's gloves take care of himself and then like take down chaos in just a couple of hits he wouldn't have had haste um, I think in some versions there's a potion you can drink that can give you that. I don't know that it was in the original game. But yeah, you could totally... I think there's a way in certain versions where you could one-shot Chaos with a, with a solo monk. Um, I, never, was never, I don't believe I ever pulled off the one-shot, but uh, I did beat him with the solo monk, and it was, and it was totally doable. Uh, so... Alright, the time loop was severed at last. The endless struggle that raged over 2,000 years has ended, so it's not such an endless struggle, is it? And peace prevailed once more. The light of the four crystals restored the forces of wind, water, earth, and fire. It was a mere trick of fate that had given rise to the chain of Garland's wrath. I think about it, how is it a time loop? It looped once. It's not like it was a big thing that kept happening and happening. We're the ones that killed Garland and sent him back. And then he sent the four fiends forward, creating the time loop, which immediately broke before it had did anything whatsoever. Not the strongest plot in the world on this game, I think. Anyway, magnified by the four forces meant to guide our world, the trick of fate also gave birth to the fiends. Monsters had run rampant as the world sank into darkness, but that is all now past. Or is it future? With the four forces flowing as they were meant, the warriors prepared to cross time and return to the world they knew. How? I guess we back we could go backtrack to that little black portal and it would take us back? Yeah. Alright, so a world where a Princess Sarah, Queen Jane, and even Garland himself await. We never talked to the Queen. I think she's just like sitting in a side room somewhere in the castle. 
When was this fateful day that sent time spiraling into a loop? None can say. Because it didn't happen. We stopped it, but now it never happened. It seemed the cycle into which time had fallen would last forever, or, you know, one cycle through when we killed Garland and he was sent back in time. But the bravery of four young travelers changed that. They took the forces that filled the world with darkness and used them to bathe the world in light. None will ever recall the struggle of the four endured, for the breaking of the chain means that it never existed. Which means what? It's time for us to go fight Garland? Like, Garland's alive in this world. It just said he waits. So Garland's still around. So what happens to him? He presumably still turns bad. Not really sure how he hooked up with the fiends, so... Within the tales of fantasy that people tell, the memory of their deeds lives on. Which is why this is just a fantasy, and not history, that we all remember. The tales of dwarves, elves, dragons, and shining civilizations that reached for the heavens even as they fell. Now their return is upon us. With their memory of their struggle buried deep in our hearts, they will quietly watch over our world. Our world, like that looked nothing like our world. I'm just saying. This is not Dragon Quest 3. Remember always the forces of the world must be used as they were intended. The power of light must never be used for dark, and the true crystal resides in your heart. For you are the warrior who crossed time. You are the bringer of light. Me? Is it me? Is he talking about me? I mean, I didn't cross time. I was controlling like a little puppet master the four people who did cross time. So, the power was in my hands. <laughs> do, do, do. So, this was the remaster of Final Fantasy 1. I am not happy with all the changes they made. I, obviously, I didn't need the grinding spots that I normally would have hit. Uh, refighting the evil eye in front of the float stone over and over again. Refighting zombie dragons in the uh, Castle of Ordeals. Those are my two favorite grinding spots in this game. Because quick and easy, get you can shoot way ahead of where you should be. Or catch up, rather, since I skipped uh, the volcano. It's a great way of grinding, and I kind of miss that. But at the same time, I clearly didn't need it. Um, if you watch through the whole series, I did grinding from level 1 to like level 5 or 6, whatever it was, and then went and fought Garland, because you got to have enough hit points to last the battle. And, you know, doesn't take that long to get to that level at the beginning. And from there, the only other time I did any grinding was outside the Elven Castle again, and mostly that was just to afford magic spells and some new a little bit of weapons and armor and some potions before going to take on the marsh cave and since then there was no actual grinding whatsoever that was all just fighting all the fights traversing through the levels and you saw i didn't do a lot of extra exploring because i knew exactly where i was going and i didn't get stuck down side paths i only went after the gear that i wanted with the exception of the Air Fortress, where I went and got everything that there was. Because um, why not? I mean, it's got such good stuff. And all the, the really good stuff is right next to the couple things that I wouldn't have wanted. So I think the only thing that really took me out of my way for what I was after would have been getting the Adamant. Since I never went back and made Excalibur. I think there's an achievement for that. So I will probably... I, someday I might replay this and go after some of those achievements that I missed. I think there's one for like leveling everybody up to 50. Uh, so I'm not actually that far off on this. I might reload my game at some point and just quick grind up to max level. A um, couple things like that. There's one that I saw that I don't know that I'm going to do now, but I was actually happy when I saw it because I looked in the achievements on PlayStation 
and there was one for playing a mini game that I had completely forgotten even existed. In the original Nintendo, once you have the ship, you go on the ship and you like sit there and I think you tap the A and B buttons together over and over again and like if you tap it like 50 or 100 times together, something like that, I forget, You it loads you in to one of those little 4x4, four four, it's a 4x4 four four grid with the numbers 1 through 15 and one blank spot on it and you can move one square at a time in a, you know, X, Y axis and you can just move them around you got to reorder it so it's one through four, five through eight, um, nine through twelve, and then thirteen, fourteen, fifteen at the bottom. So you just move the little tiles around, and when you get it all in the right order, you win the game, and you got like a hundred gil. So it was absolutely not worth doing. It was free money, but you could have gotten that same amount in a fraction of the time just by fighting a couple of battles. But it was kind of it was a weird little mini game that. I don't remember how I first found out about it. I probably read about it in Nintendo Power or something, which was a magazine, for those of you who never experienced it. Um, it came out just with information about lots of different games, and they had some little tips and tricks you could do for different games. And so I probably learned it from that, but it was a fun little mini game that served no purpose whatsoever. And I'd forgotten about it because I hadn't done it in 30 years almost. Um, but I saw there's there is a achievement for doing it. So at some point when I really am just going back, if I ever decide to platinum this game for some reason, I will obviously do that, and I will enjoy the few minutes it takes me to solve the little puzzle. But I'm glad that they kept it in because it's a little Easter egg mini game thing that is a throwback to the original game. And as I understand it, there's a lot of those little mini games in some of the games. I think there's supposed to be like a blackjack game, and after the end credits in FF9. If there's a way to do it. I've never done that one. I, I re remember reading about it somewhere. Um, it's like some little weird mini games like that that just they're not connected to the actual game at all. They're just in there for because they can. But anyway, overall, I like it. I don't know that it's my favorite version of the game. I really, uh, the version that I have on my phone that I think is a, a slightly updated version from the, um, the DS for one that they put out. I think with, it's got the extra shrines, which I like having them even though I hate doing them. I like that they're there. Uh, it uses MP instead of uh, limited spell slots per level. I don't really care either way on this one. You, we. Just because of my play style, I use magic so little that I never once ran out of magic. I was using ethers at the end just because they were there. If I had not had them, I would have husbanded my magic just a little bit more in some of those final fights. But again, that's why I have two characters capable of casting haste. is so that I can go into boss battles and the final dungeon especially, and I've got two people worth of haste to cast and people dishing out the damage as the result of it. If I only had the one fighter um, or if I had double fighters or something, the one person could dish out damage and then everyone else would just be sort of sitting there trying to support them and keep them alive. Um, so having the ninja have the black magic option to get the haste spell out and then even use a temper if, if I would have needed it, I would have been switching back and forth between the red mage and the ninja for casting some of that magic um, just to, if I didn't have the ethers. Then, you know, it. I was never really at a loss for magic. I could have used more of my higher power magic in the final battle because I obviously wasn't using it on the way in there. Um, if I go back and count, I might have run out of a spell at some point because I used it during the Fiends. But if I didn't have the option of restoring my magic with the Aethers, I probably wouldn't have used it on the Fiends necessarily because I probably wouldn't have needed to. Um, I think there's only a couple places there where I really lost enough health where it would justify casting an AoE spell like that Flare spell from Lich. And you know, I think I got a little bit low there against Kraken at one point, but not that bad. It, it's kind it's... I don't know. I mean, any version is an upgrade and an improvement over the original Nintendo version solely for the lack of an inventory in that one. I, it has the classic value of being the first, but 
dear god, that inventory just was terrible. And so every version since then will obviously be an upgrade in my mind from the original. This one... I, I mean, it's a close second, I think, to the one that I've got on my phone, the mobile version. It's The, the graphics, obviously, were not intended to be as up-to-date as that one is. This is the remaster of the pixelation, pixelated version. So the graphics that they did in keeping with that appearance of the pixelation, I think were fantastic. They did true justice to all the sprites. They kept everything in important that they needed to. Most of the shortcomings with it are nitpicks from me as they get off my lawn, old guy who you're messing with the game in my memory, even though I'm obviously lauding things that they changed that were good for me and griping about things just because it's not the way I remember it, so... You know, I absolutely realize there's a little bit of hypocrisy there, but... I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a quick throwback, and it's a fast game. This was... You know, m m all these videos except this one were... You know, half hour to 45 minutes for the most part. I think there was one that was closing up on an hour. So, you know, it was a 10, 11 hour game, something like that. If I went back and added them all together, not that bad. I remember being able to beat this in a day once I knew what I was doing, so that holds up. But hopefully you all enjoyed watching it along with me and my commentary was interesting at least from the perspective of someone who grew up with and lived this game and this series from its origins and from the get-go that I have always been a Final Fantasy fan. And this is the one that started it all off, and I'm really glad they went back and did these remasters. I think it's a nice version of it. Um, I'm not looking forward to Final Fantasy II. I, I've played it once. I did not enjoy it. Um, I'm going to go through it and see what happens, but I don't th I'm not going to enjoy that one as much as I am the rest of the uh, 1 through 6 that this offers me. So... Anyway, thank you for joining me. Just going to let the credits play out a little bit here and come back and join me for the rest of for the next Final Fantasy playthrough that I do. Hope everybody having having a great day. Thank you. <laughs>